there are three ways to write rate laws. The first way we talked about is using experimental data. Use the concentration and how long it takes for the concentration to react. The second way is to graph. What you do is graph the concentrations versus time and you compare the graphs. So first let's talk about integrated rate laws. First of all, if you have the integrated rate law, it's going to be often in this form. It's natural log and this would be concentration of A at some point in time over concentration of A at the zero, which means the initial point of the reaction. Now this is a net, it will have a negative slope and then it's K, which is your rate law constant. That's always a lower K. And the time, and the time could be any units depending on the reaction. It could be seconds, minutes, hours, whatever. And then you see here an explanation based on what I just told you, what uh, concentration of A is and concentration of A, A sub zero and A at T. So let's continue. So let's put A in a form that makes more sense. So what we're gonna do is manipulate that and move it around to look like this. And then finally, we're gonna end up with this form. And this is gonna be helpful because it's gonna look like the form of, uh, of the, the graph or equation for a line where we see y equals mx plus b. So the y will be natural log of a over time, and the b or the intercept is gonna be at the zero point, and then here we see the slope is the rate law constant, and x is gonna be time. So what this tells us, and you can actually write this down if you have the sheet that looks like this, this would be a first order reaction. So this is the integrated rate law, which says integrated rate law, you can write this in right, down right there. So this is the integrated rate law for a first order reaction, and that's what we'll be using. Now, a first order process, if a reaction's first order, it's gonna give you a straight line. So one thing I did here is I wrote a graph where I said concentration of A versus time, and then I, I did a, a straight line with a negative slope and that's what you'll see there. So let's look at an example. Here's an example of one reaction. We take methyl isonitrile, it changes that acetyl nit uh, nitrile. Uh, consider this process, and you see this is basically what we call unimolecular. There's only one substance reacting, and it goes to a different substance. So basically, the NC turns around the CN. So basically, this part of the particle just switches places. But if you graph this, you put, uh, if you just graph it simply with versus pressure, now for this, remember we can use pressure and concentration the same, we learned that in the last chapter on gases. Use pressure versus time, you'll get a slope like this. So we can get the rates from this, but if we change this and take natural log of this, all of a sudden we'll see a straight line. So when P is plotted as a function of time, a straight line results. And so that is only for a first order process. Now while we're here, one thing I would like is to go back to, actually I think the last time I pointed to zero order, this would all go under first order. So if you wanted to uh, draw the plot there, it would be natural log of concentration, A or whatever you're talking about versus time. What I'd like to also do is, let's go ahead and fill in the one for zero order. Zero order means the integrated rate law for that will look similar to the first one, it said it would look like this. It would say, if we go back to the last slide, let's go and fill in the one for zero order. So for zero order, instead of looking like this, it's gonna be concentration of A at certain, certain points on. So let's change this to zero. Sorry, it's really hard for me to write on this thing. Zero, that's my zero right there. So instead of natural log of A at a certain point, it's just gonna be concentration of A at a certain point in time is minus KT, and instead of, of natural log of A, it's gonna be that. So if you have a, a zero order process, the graph, which we're gonna see, this would be your integrated rate law. So it's gonna be concentration of A at a certain point in time equals minus KT plus concentration of A sub naught zero. So let's go look ahead and look forward so when we do this graph for the substance, basically if it's zero order, you would see a straight line in this one. So under the plot needed for a straight line, you would have concentration of A and time, but instead of a slope like we see here, it would give you a straight line. Let's proceed. So, but on first order, that's a straight line. So when you put concentration or pressure, remember we can use those the same, uh, versus time, you'll see a straight line. So let's look. Um, Therefore, the process is first order and K is a negative slope. So that's a way we can find out if it's first order is simply graphing it. We see if it's first or second or zero order. We'll look at second in just a second. 
And notice the units for the first order are seconds to the minus one. Okay, let's proceed and let's look at a second order process. Similarly, we can get to integrate the rate law for a process at second order. Now this is the rate law uh, for a second order. So under integrated rate law for second order, this is what you want to write down for that. So instead of natural log or A for the y-intercept, we're going to have the inverse of the concentration of A. Notice there's no natural log here. And notice this is a positive K. That means we're going to have a positive slope. So instead of going down, this one's going to be sloping in the upward direction. And our y-intercept's going to be 1 over um, the concentration of A sub naught 0, which means it's initial concent or the starting concentration. So this is also in that form. And so this is our second order reaction. So if a, a process is second order and we plot the inverse of the concentration versus time, we'll get a straight line. So let's see what that looks like. So let's look at this process where you take nitrogen dioxide, it changes to nitrogen monoxide plus one half uh, mole of O2 gas. And so here we see the data. This is what you'll see. You'll see time. And so this is what would go on your x-axis and then concentration of your reactant, because that should be going down because it's changed the product, is going to go on your y-axis. So, so let's, plot, let's plot that. So how you would do this is basically you would plot this uh, information versus time as concentration, this information natural log versus time, and this information versus uh, for one over the inverse. So you'll do, do three and see which one of the three is a straight line, and that would tell you what order it is. So when we plot this, we see if you just do natural log, we don't get a straight line. So this indicates this is not a first order reaction. So here we took natural log of the, all that information. We did not get a straight line, so that means it's not first order. Then what we do is we change that, and we're going to take the inverse of all these values. So we're going to take the inverse of 0.01, the inverse of 0.0787, the inverse of 0.00649. And so the inverse of all these numbers, let's do that. And so when we do that, we get these numbers here. And then we're going to graph those inverse of those concentrations versus time. Those are here. And notice we get a nice straight line. So that would indicate that this is a second order reaction. Uh, so graphing this versus time gives us plot. Because this is a straight line, it's a second order reaction. That's what it did. Um, and notice. The other idea that we're going to talk about briefly is half-life. I have a few things written down here about half-life. Uh, that's where you see is a graph that looks somewhat like this. Now, half-life really only goes with first-order reactions. So half-life is defined as the time required for one half of a reactant to go from reactants to products. So if you see, if you start it with 150 tor, when it goes down to half that, 75 tor, that would be one half-life. When 75 goes down to 37.5, that is the second half-life. Notice that each half-life is the same. The, the length of the half-life does not change in the process of the reaction. Uh, because this is, and so we can say for this, the half-life is 0.05 of the initial concentration. And it's always for first order, so half-life goes with first order processes. So when we evaluate or manipulate this, we end up with the formula that gives us this, 0.693 over K equals half-life. Now, you could also say natural log, but so for the first order process, this is the reaction you want to write down or the formula you want to write down. And where you could write this is where it says uh, first order, go under half-life. Uh, this is an equation that's going to be important. Now, there is an equation for zero order and second order, but those really we won't be using. This we'll, we'll, we will use quite a bit. So anything that's radioactive and a lot of chemical reactions will follow this process. And so for a second order process, this is the equation for half-life. We will not be using this as much there, but we'll write that one down. So that's the equation for half-life of the second order. So this concludes our first uh, video on kinetics. Hopefully you got some good notes. Uh, talk to you tomorrow. Let me know if you have any questions. Have a good day.